Lee Sin already having two games ever since the new patch, but something that I need to highlight is this Vipic. pick. Both junglers very big fans, specifically Aki, where I think it will be the perfect answer alongside Akali up against something like the Varus. But NIP, I mean, the Ash is still available. So if you do want to sneak that into your pockets for this first three picking phase, that would be amazing for them bottom lane. See what they want to try and go for here, but I will say you are able to get Pout onto the rise. He has looked very, very comfortable on this pick. You know you're going into an Akali, so he's going to have that early priority in the first few levels of the game. Very happy to pick that one up for himself. But now OMG find himself in a unique position. We might actually see the Samira being picked up here. They can go Samira Nautilus straight away because it has not been banned. It is something that Abel is very, very comfortable on should he want to go for it. But in traditional OMG style, they want to try and get those solo lanes locked and loaded as soon as possible. Yeah, it also definitely fits into the current team identity of OMG. With the Wukong and Akali, a lot of mobility and just team fighting power with the Cassante being currently hovered, where I guess it's just going to be invincible what he can really pick out of his champion pool as a counter pick. Gwen and Fiora still very uh, viable in that top side as well. Where invincible, I mean, he has one of the biggest champion pools that we've seen in the uh, top lane pool i guess he's very happy to pick something that is like the fiora the camille to go up against this cassante but this i mean supports very very open none of them are getting picked or even banned no not at all but the zin zhao gonna be locked in here for shalom bao xlb picking up again something very similar in style we saw it a lot in 2022 where it was the kind of the trade-off of either the lee sin the zin zhao something that can get early skirmishes going and there is the band by nip they're gonna say look we let it go all the way down to here we're not gonna let it go any further because again when things start to get banned away in the second phase you are starting to see a very vulnerable bot side so omg they're just front loading the top side they're saying look able pp god we have full faith in that no matter what is banned against you you could make it work we're just going to make sure top side works for us yeah, I'm pretty surprised that OMG is also banning up the Jace. They do not want Shandy to be versing something like the Jace in that top side, since they, they have already locked in the rise. But back to this bottom lane, two ADC bans coming out of NIP already, where the Ash also gets taken off. That does open the pool to something like the Zeri. I mean, you can also pick something like the Jin, where you already have so much engage and, I guess, dive power from the side of OMG. It would uh, fit perfectly into this team composition. Yeah, and I love as well that we kind of, you know, you look at the AD carries that are actually banned. It's Kaisa and Samira. These are not exactly the most meta of picks right now. We even <laughs> saw it yesterday where it was like, you're playing a Kaisa into a Varus, the extra range into a Lethality Varus becomes untenable in the long sense, of, you know, kind of in the longer range battles that you end up in that mid game. So really curious to see now that NIP are saying, look, we know how Abel wants to play. We know what kind of style he wants to go for, but then that just leaves open something like the Zeri Lulu and the Despite all these very specific bands coming out here for the side of NIP, OMG get themselves what would be a very normal draft from everyone's kind of, you know, how everyone is concerned. Your bot lane is happy to just farm up while your top side is the kind of ones that are getting up to level six and looking for those opportunities. Yeah, definitely a very traditional team composition for this game one on the side of OMG, but NIP locking in this karma, at least hovering it, paired alongside Varus does mean that they are trying to look for that lane party in the early game, which does allow this Xin Zhao to make plays around the map, and especially with that dragon. But looking at the side of NIP, very aggressive Renekton Xin Zhao can get into the face of Zeri and Akali in these team fights. But I also do want to mention that, I mean, NIP, their team composition, you are going against against something like the Wukong and Cassante, where they do have a lot of power in the 5v5. So NIP needs to get that ball rolling because I think Ryze as a champion on itself, he doesn't do too much damage, but he's definitely tanky. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the kind of setup right now. You can see with NIP, they're going for that early winning lane. He has like 33 games played. He's a very prolific Akali player. Normally, the Akali and the Asylum are just banned against him. And now we're mm -hmm. starting to see, for the first time in week number seven, we are getting the Akali for Cream. But we shall wait no longer. We shall hypothesize no more as we jump into the rift for game number one of this best of three for NIP. Ooh, that's a loud crowd. But for NIP, this is a huge moment there to try and push themselves forward. He should be fine. He's positioned themselves in the brush there, but NIP looking for some purchase. We're seeing this a lot more in the LPL. A lot more uh, level ones down in this bot side to try and just try and catch somebody out. 
Yep, with the Karma already having that sweeper available does mean that they are going to gain the bot lane bush party, which is exactly what you want as the bot lane of NIP. Something like the Varus and Karma, they're going to provide so much poke in terms of the trades. I mean, Zeri, she's just trying to survive lane and get to those item spikes later on into uh, the Baron objective and stuff like that. But Xiaolongbao does look like he's going to be starting this red buff, which does allow op uh, open angles at least to play towards that bot side. Is spotted out immediately on a ward, so they will know exactly where this Xin Zhao is starting. They might maybe look for a little bit of a cheese level 2 or 3 gank up towards that top side, but they should be very easily discovered uh, as we kind of wait to see where everyone wants to go. But big moment here, and again, we kind of, you know, we're talking a little bit of OMG, how they're maybe a little bit underrated in a lot of different senses, and you can't really blame people for kind of saying, you know, 4-4 four and four scoreline on the cusp of uh, playoffs are literally 10th at the moment, but even just looking at kind of, you know, some of the games they have yet to play, they, they have got a pretty unholy schedule of teams to kind of go up against. They play JDG later this week, then they, you know, have a week off, really, from the top teams, then it's Weibo, EDG, Top Esports, BLG. They haven't really been going up against the, the creme de la creme of the LPL just yet, so building up a little bit more momentum definitely can't hurt them. Yeah, that does does mean how important winning this series is going to be because you know you just mentioned the uh, strength of schedule for them is just going to get even more tough as the weeks go by but yeah i mean going back to this point on photic he is on something like the barris where we've been seeing a lot more on hit barris over lethality and i think that is because of a change in meta where champions like the Xante and scion i mean you just have to have that on hit build that can shred down the tanks something like the sejuani as well yeah those big tanky builds tend to be uh, pretty difficult to burn through when you're when your lethality doesn't really work as well as you'd probably possibly hope so has been that slight change away and it does feel like the lethality as well has kind of gone from a little bit more of a snowball one you want to get that on hit not only just for the team fights but for uh just straight up for you know in case the laning phase doesn't really go that well you know it does feel like sometimes if uh, the laning phase is uh, a little bit you know, untoward or not that, not that great. Speaking of not that great, not a great moment for Kareem. It's into the flash, but an auto attack. XLB gets himself first blood, and that's the early proactivity we wanted to see. Gets away scratch free. I mean, just burning one flash, and it was a flash for flash trade where this Xin Zhao is now online with this first blood into his pockets, where Pout's also going to get this wave in. Does burn the Akali TP as well. He does have no mana though, so if Aki's sneaky, he can potentially get a return kill. Pal is going to defuse by that by just backing here. But really good stuff from the side of NIP in this early game. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. Like this, again, we, we can't overstress it that this, this this setup from NIP in terms of the laning phase, they will have push in all three. They should be the ones getting the early objectives, getting the early pressure down. And good start for them at the moment there with the Zin Zhao making good use of that early priority. So. Good start here for NIP as they look to try and just, you know, continue a little bit more dominance in this early game. But for OMG, they're just patiently waiting. They just need to bide their time. There's no need to panic. Yes, the Akali did die, but let's be real. Akali's not really that much of a champion until level 6 when she gets access to her double dash. So it's not it's not exactly uh, unexpected to see that the, the Akali not exactly having a great time in this early stage. Most definitely. I mean, he just didn't expect the Xin Zhao skill shot to hit and connect where he didn't even flash early on, but like you've been saying, the traditional team composition out of OMG, where they do have the Zeri as that looking security, where if all things go wrong, just play for Abel. He also has that Lulu to protect him in these team fights up against something that is like the Renekton and Xin Zhao. I mean, Ryze and Varus, they will be a very close range in terms of DPS, so Abel's gonna be online. OMG, they do have a scaling uh, win con to play for, but like you've been saying, First Blood for Xiao Longbao, they have that early team composition where Renekton is going to be really aggressive and looking for those skirmishes in the mid game. Now, obviously, we have gone from very hard farming junglers to uh, very hard ganking junglers or skirmishes, and I was going to get your opinion on like, why? Why have we seen such a, a, a strange shift from the, the, the meta as such? I know we moved from 13.1 to 13.3, but it just feels like it's such a, a, a big leap, in my opinion. Just wanted to get pick your brain and see why we're seeing such a change. Yep, so Riot actually changed the goal for these jungle camps where they give significantly less for those champions that do want to look for those full clears, but I believe in patch 13.4 they reverted it and camps will give more gold, so we might potentially see something like the Karthus coming back. 
Karthus has not Haven't seen Karthus in a fair while. We actually saw him once or twice this play. <laughs> no, it's more... I don't want uninteractive, all right? When you literally have a person who can just die and still do damage and there's nothing you can do about it, that feels bad, man. That's a feels bad, man, for me. But uh, it's... Uh, we'll see, you know? Hopefully yours is uh, more of a, a guest and a premonition. And I'll blame you if you see Karthus now uh, in the LPL. But... Uh, OMG, seeing if they can make something work here, you don't really have any real CC right now between Aki, Abel, and PP Gods, so... But everyone else on NIP has made their way down towards this bot side. And they are just waiting to see. This could be a bit of a 4v4 skirmish. Both teams are kind of hovering themselves very aggressively, but no ultimates available for the junglers makes this one very difficult. But Cream and Pout do have access to theirs, so... This might be a bit of a, a bit of a skirmish, but it'd be, be, it'd be risky for OMG to really go for it. I was pretty confused there because we do see the ball in of OMG getting priority up against something like the Varus and Karma. Although Xiaolongbao does get the scuttle in the very end, but that does raise a lot of concerns for this bot lane 2v2, where you need to wonder why the Varus Karma isn't able to get that push in, at least early on in the game. A lot of attention being given down now towards this bot side. And can't really blame them. Both junglers happy to keep priority around this jungle side because the dragon has spawned. It is Chem Drake first, so not hard to take really, but like you said, just giving up that priority would uh, would be fairly detrimental to either team. So we can see now the Wukong Aki going back into his jungle, trying to clear off that wave, make sure he gets up to that cyclone. And with that Sheen, might have an opportunity or two in the next minute or so to get a gank off don't expect them to really go towards top side it should just be a wet noodle fight for the next few minutes but around that dragon that's when we could maybe see this game really open up it does seem both junglers are playing towards this top side though harold sporting in five seconds i mean we already saw akali getting that push in however she needs to back for those items karma and varus already making their way here able he is going back to the bottom lane so they do have a numbers advantage if they do decide to fight for this herald Well, full rotation coming in. They've already kept Zeri down that bot side, so NIP fully committing while the side of OMG just tend to keep themselves and, and their priorities towards that scaling. They're happy to let this one go off as easy as you like. They do not have a TP on Pout, so he isn't going to be able to rejoin this one here. And actually, they haven't fully secured this side of the jungle right now. They are getting priority in mid, but... It is difficult for them to really commit to this, especially with Topside not really there. And yeah, they're gonna have to commit the Realm Warp just to make sure they can get this, because Rift Herald's resetting. This is going to be a straight up 5v5 as Abel joins in the fight from the bottom lane. Here we go. Chain of Corruption is good. We're gonna see a full engage coming in. There is the Lightning Crash, which Lulu has been taken out. It's a trade, though, support for AD Carry. Abel immediately getting himself on the cleanse as Pout tries to deal with the Cassante. Shanji doing so much and gets the kill. The Akali has been traded back as well. Invincible just being kited out. Look at these little laser beams coming out. XLB. Just about keeps himself alive, but so much used there. It does end up being a two for two at the end of it all. But OMG, just like I feel like they shouldn't have any right to contest that. Yeah, two for two trade, but OMG somehow comes out on top. I think they are in a better map position compared to the other side. How the two kills does go into the hands of Xiaolongbao this time around. Carol doesn't actually end up getting finished here, but Abel just finds a really nasty flank onto the bot side of NIP and Fotig just getting short in the amount. CC and getting dispositioned into the enemy team composition does mean he dies very first and NIP without their ADC I mean Urias doesn't do damage just quite yet Renekton is trying his best but Zeri is just outspacing him that's the big thing is that you lost so so much there in terms of your engage tools as well from the side of NFP. You had to use the Realm War from Pout just to get back in range because he resets. So really not ideal, kind of disconnected from NIP and it does open the window for OMG now. We're going to come back into this. This time around they do have pretty much full priority. They have a TP technically on Cream but he's all the way down that bot side soaking up that wave. So just going to be basically a, a fight for the sake of a fight the first time around. Second time around it will be NIP picking up the Herald. Well, Fotik in a bit of a dangerous situation here. It does get spotted out by Aki. We do see the bottom lane of NIP playing extremely safe as this Herald goes to the hands of Xiaolongbao. However, Dragon. OMG did set up the vision control now with the Wukong being there first, so you're going to have to face check into something with so much CC. And they're looking for it right now. We do see 
Early sweeper actually from Abel, trying to be able to control vision around these objectives right now. We'll have the Cyclone back up and available. No Realm Warp for the moment, but everyone's starting to pick back up their items. Shanji would love to wait for a couple more seconds. He would have access to his TP and the All Out. And with the access to the Iceborne Gauntlet, I mean, Shanji's in a fantastic position right now. Really just had a, a little bit of an item curve that he would really love to try and exploit if he can. As both teams just posture aggressively around this dragon. This is where NIP need to be cautiously aggressive it's as weird as as nonsensical as it sounds because they don't want to give up too much in the early game they want to try and make sure they are gaining off of these fights but they also don't want to make sure that they're leaving everything open to the side of omg to counter with we saw it at that rift herald where they were uh, omg were able to counter back and really put down some damage on top of nip but now with the dragon secured nip should be able to get themselves back into the lanes and they should be fine most definitely. The fight does defuse and the dragon does go towards the side of NIP, but, you know, I'm not too mad at that because OMG is just trying to scale to that late game where this Zeri is already a little bit ahead in that CS where she was able to catch that extra wave as Votic rotated to Herald first, but my concern is that Cream on this Akali, he's already 0-2 and you definitely don't want an assassin to be behind in items because nothing is going to be dying in the team fights when NIP, I mean, this right is just going to build a roller and you also have to deal with Immortal Shield I'll wait to see what ends up being the priority here. Scream has had two deaths, unfortunately, to his name. Does look pretty bad. From one was uh, an early gank, and the second one was him trying to assassinate on the backside. So, can forgive him for the moment. As uh, now we'll start to see with those extra points in the five-point strike, he is just clearing out those waves very, very efficiently. And Shanji, I love this. He can just ignore. The Renekton completely and kind of say, cool, I could just proxy you. I could get this plate with my Demolish proc. There's nothing you can really do. And this is where the Renekton into the Cassante matchup really does start to skew away from the Renekton because he does have early priority, but the Cassante will have just more presence in a team fight if it's just a standard front to back. Yeah, most definitely, especially with the Mythic item coming online for Shanzi. Having that item advantage up against this Renekton does mean he can't ever trade up against the Cassante. But the Herald does get dropped in this bottom lane where Fotic will be picking up that gold. So that does let him come back into the game as Fotic, uh, as Abel is a little bit more up in CS. But yeah, back in this top lane, I mean, Shanzi on this Cassante. I have one phrase to describe him and it is to just let him cook. <laughs> you are a Twitch streamer, as <laughs> <laughs> it can get much worse than let him cook, yeah. but I'm just gonna stop I, I'm there. I'm sure, for sure, just clink clink or something like that. I think uh, you, you 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 go by many names. I think one is Pedra, but uh, what? As we can come by. Yeah. <laughs> you think your chat don't tell me these things? Your chat your chat have oh, no. uh, said, sent you said, they've sold you out in this particular sense, but coming back into this game. We'll see XLB looking for an engage here, and that's a Divine Sunder on Aki. Should be able to get his ultimate off and use his decoy as well. They are being very aggressive here, NIP, but not really to, uh, to much avail. They do get the Cyclone out of Aki, but outside of that, nothing more. This is where the game gets a little bit harder, because the longer this goes on, the more value you get out of this Lulu. The wild growth, the shieldings, the polymorph. These things will just become nuisances for an NIP to really burn through. So I'm curious to see, you know, who who is your priority in these team fights? Who are you looking to burst down here as NIP? NIP definitely need Able dead as before he starts dancing on everyone, but that is going to be a tricky one, as you said, Lulu with the ultimate and Polymorph having that healing ability is going to be tough, especially when NIP's entire team composition is so low ranged. But I would love to see more team fighting out of Invincible. I mean, you are just in an isolated matchup, but you need to know that the Cassante outscales you. Alrighty, you got the Bramble Vest. Ages of Legion alongside his. Iceborne Gauntlet. We will see the turret on both side. Pretty much secured here now by the bot lane and jungle trio. Actually, I do see uh, a little rise at the top of my screen. Pouch is kind of keeping himself in the vicinity as well. One minute till both the Dragon and Rift Herald spawn. So both objectives up at the same time. We can see a little bit of a trade as Lulu just being Lulu and being annoying for the moment. 
the does mean the teal and tower from OMG dies down, but it allows a uh, Photic and Karma to really move towards that mid lane and start pushing in and getting that lane party up and early. Where Pal also will take up the side lane, but Invincible, I mean, every time the camera comes down, Shandy is consistently under tower, going for those trades, never dropping below half HP, and getting so many plates in the pockets of this Cassante as well. But Photic now coming to this mid lane where the Herald and Dragon is going to be spawning, but we need to do an item checkup where NIP having most of their items available already. Well, they just stacking up Night Harvester picked up by OMG's Cream. And we will see Aki now fully upgrading his. And actually, that's the big thing we didn't even actually get to notice. Aki is the one with the upgraded smite. He has 1,200. XLB still has about six stacks left on his. So not really in a position to go for a full. It's not really a 50-50 at that point there. You just have so much true damage access to the uh, Wukong over the Xin Zhao. So curious to see where the priority does go. It looks like for the moment it is OMG saying, look, we want the Rift Herald. We want to try and crack open some of these turrets, get that gold onto what you mentioned earlier, like the Assassins and even onto someone like Zeri. But maybe we'll have a little bit of an engage here. Good poke coming out here from NIP to zone away everyone as they look to try and just defend around this mid lane. Dragon seems to be their point of priority and OMG are willing to just take the trade. They don't want to go for a full 5v5 just yet. They're happy with the state of the game as it is right now. Now even Invincible does rotate towards this dragon, but that does mean the top lane tower is going to fall to the hands of Shen Zi. So overall, I mean, you do get two dragons into the pockets of NIP, but what are you trading off? I mean, a Herald, and that top lane is now open, where Invincible, he's just going to consistently get pressured in this lane up, get pushed in, until you start forcing those fights in the mid game. I think the big thing as well is that we, you know, we said we wanted NIP to kind of get a lot out of this early game, but looking down the line, basically even in CS in terms of mid lane, but then two dragons is great for sure. Does set them up for a mountain soul in the next 10 minutes or so, but you're 20 CS down in top side, you're 10 CS down in bot lane. You haven't re, and actually you're 20 CS down in the jungle as well. So you haven't really been able to gain a hell of a lot out of these pushing lanes, out of this priority. So right now, I think OMG are in a very comfortable position in terms of where they find themselves in the game. They're getting their first items. They're almost towards their second. I'm actually very curious to see what Abel turns that no magic mantle into because he picked it up very, very early just to try and cover himself against this rise. So right now, I don't think it's a bad spot if you're on the side of uh, OMG and NFP are forced to use the TP to deal with Shelly in the mid lane who is towering forward. They want to try and stop this charge and they shall not do it. We protect the mid lane tower from falling down but like You've been saying Xiaolongba with that first blood going into their pockets. We didn't see too much out of this Xinjiao pick. And of course, up against Wukong, just don't have as much oh, Here we go. The Cyclone goes in. That's going to be everybody caught open on top of it. They use the wild rope, but Aki does fall after the end of it all. XLP tries to fly away, but Cream follows him to his death. Now we might see a little bit more use as Abel gets himself over the wall. They do get a two for one trade as OMG get a little bit antsy. And NIP respond and say, nah, nah, we're still stronger. And. OMG gives what NIP has been looking for for the past 19 minutes where they do get a two for one trade but this Akali now one and three does get a return kill but that does mean she also dies as a response where I think just the communication from OMG wasn't there as Wukong died really really fast and the Akali went back and she just also died without the jungler being alive but we're gonna take another look at this where Aki gets a really nasty ultimate onto Photic but Xin Zhao, I mean, he's just zoning everyone up in the middle where Invincible also trying to do something in that middle lane where Wukong just gets instantly bursted. James goes for the kill under tower, does end up dying, but Abel able to sneak away with Zeri E, because Zeri do funny things. Yeah, Zeri go burr as uh, she does end up getting out of that fight there. And again, like you said, yeah, it did feel like... OMG, specifically Aki, just getting very antsy right there, looking for something that just wasn't really there. And you're, you're fighting against a Renekton and a Xin Zhao, who are at 20 minutes very happy to take these fights, very comfortable with where they are in terms of the game. Now a Baron on the map. Do you see both these teams trying to hovering around at the Gwinsu's Rage Blade finished up here for Fotek. Fotek's been quietly building up a fair arsenal of weapons for his items and will be able to shred through this uh, this Baron objective very, very quickly. So it's going to be about kind of, you know, making sure that these teams have relative vision control around that area. So they're not just getting that taken away from them without any contest. 
Yeah, Aki definitely getting a little bit desperate with how forced the engage felt. I mean, Photic didn't even end up burning any summoners as it was pretty much a one-man cyclone from the side of OMG. But I was pretty surprised because you have the Zeri and Cassante comfortably scaling into that late game. So you didn't need to force something like that. And NIP going back into the driver's position. More pressure onto this mid lane. You can see that just with a uh, Wukong and a Lulu. Very difficult to... Uh, really actually get any kind of defense so they'll lose about two-thirds of the hp off of that tower brunan's hurricane has been finished up for abel so he's getting there not quite there but he is getting there double gore drinker for the top laner and jungle of mip as well so the sustain very much available you would imagine that uh, outside of the bramble vest you would be liking to see a little bit more uh grievous wounds to come in from the side of omg and with a minute till dragon spawns how do you want to see both these teams set up how do you want to see them kind of move around this objective as it goes, you can't really let this one go as your own if you're omg Yep, this is going to be the third dragon if NIP does manage to grab it into their hands, putting them on sole point. So OMG definitely need to contest this before they ever get threatened for that dragon soul. But, I mean, Cream is going to be the point to look out for if he's able to get that flank onto the carries of NIP. I mean, I don't think he realistically has a damage to kill Rise, but at least Photic or Duo and make it a 45 where this tower is extremely low. Yeah, they might look to try and just fully contest on top of it. You can see there, they're jumping on the John E and using the Chain of Corruption as well, whilst Oak is used. Ashanti goes all out, and Sanji's just dead. Nothing he can really do. Went too close to the sun and ends up getting burnt. So now, Invincible with the Dominus. They've got to be careful right now. They are still taking a fair bit of damage, but OMG, they're looking for a Miracle Steal now because they don't have their front line. Yeah, that's your frontline death. The TP is, however, available, so they are able to really stretch this 30 seconds out and play the 5v5. I think OMG still has a chance. It'll be tough. It'll be tough. They got Aki now in the Dragon Pit. They may look to try and go for this one. Here we go. Cream on the back side goes Invisible, trying to jump on the Photic. They get rid of XLB. They're not going to get the second shot, though, on the perfect execution, but they get themselves the Dragon Tower. See if he can use that Realm Orb. Gets Invincible, who dashes straight away, because Abel is starting to burn through them. He's getting some decent damage down. You can see him there, just kind of zap, zap, zap. Flash was burned, and a lot of summoners used, despite the fight initially going to NIP. It's OMG who come out with the dragon. How surprising is that OMG wins the dragon flip in a 4v5, where Shanji got caught early on. This tower does also fall down as a result, and the third dragon goes into the hands of OMG. And they're very happy with how the map state has turned out for them, because they are that same composition that is slowly coming on flying, where this entire fight as a dragon was pretty messy from the side of NIP. You see the jungler, Xiaolongbao, trying to focus down on just securing the dragon. However, with Cream on the flank, Boti is just struggling to live against the Sakali, and a lot of the attention was diverted onto the Sakali, where the jungler just fell down first, and Aki was able to secure that third dragon as well. And the big thing as well is that we did see the Crescent Guard, but the Crescent Guard knocked the decoy of Aki into the team. So they thought they got oh, the Wukong. No. They all focused onto him. We actually saw the stuns, the, the, the damage all being thrown in onto this decoy. That just basically did exactly that. Just sent a distraction the way of NIP. So really unfortunate setup right there. They were so distracted by the decoy and the Akali on the backside. They just weren't protecting their jungler. And now the game goes into an equal state now. And, and I, I'm going to be real with you. It's a mountain soul. If that gets stacked up three, four times, you are looking at ridiculous resistances to try and burn through here on the side of uh, OMG. Yeah, Kazante already looking a little bit thick coming into this game as he picks up his second item. And even Aki having that extra armor against Photic on something like the on hit Varus, where this rise is just going to be a very tanky mage, but he isn't going to be doing as much damage compared to something like the Zeri in these team fights. So it's really going to be up to how Photic positions for this next up and coming major objective because we already see Aki. Aki's focus is Photic in these team fights. Yeah, Aki is trying his very best to make sure he can take out the virus, and with good reason as well. Wit's end picked up, so three items here onto Photic makes him a very, very dangerous carry. And we'll say Abel has been doing some pretty significant work of his own, as all outer turrets have been taken here by OMG and NIP. They only have the one themselves, but they may look to try and contest around this Baron Pit. They don't really have great control of their side lanes right now. You just kind of barreling forward as a death squad to gain more vision control than anything else. But this is a little bit of 
ineffective or inefficient is probably a better way to put it because you look at top you look at bot they're just getting pushed in constantly here by the omg uh solo ladies yeah the wave state is definitely looking very dim for the side of nip where pal is forced to back and respond to this akali pushing in the bottom lane i mean even kasante having that extra uh resistance up against this renekton he is just going to consistently get that lane party as well where nip without a five-man moving unit i mean you just can't contest any of this vision control in this top side We'll wait to see. Shouldn't really see anything really happening, or at least anything really crazy happening for at least another minute and 45 seconds. You would love to have a Black Cleaver finished up here for Aki as uh, both junglers go towards that particular item. Rod of Ages has been stacked up, so Pau is level 16, two levels ahead of the Akali at the moment. So looking very, very strong for himself if he's able to kind of, you know, set his feet down and really make a nuisance of himself. Black Cleaver does get finished up there by XLB as... <laughs> Cream now looking to try and just kind of cover these side lanes. The stopwatch being picked up by Photic is something that I want to make note of just because it is going to be massive at this next dragon fight. If he uses it or doesn't and NIP can come out with the fight, that could be the difference maker as we look to try and solidify ourselves now into the mid to late game. Photic Slash will be available for this next dragon, however, so. I wouldn't stress too much. I mean, he also has the stopwatch available just in case Cream goes for one of those crazy backline dives once again. But Abel, I mean, he is very close to his third item completed. I believe that is going to be the IE, but he's been sitting on that uh, magic mantle for a very long time. I guess a little bit scared of the pelt AP damage in these team fights, mm -hmm. but it's okay. It's okay. Surely that's going to go into BT. Oh yeah, I imagine it will uh, at some point. I think it's just to kind of cover him for that first few few minutes or few learning phases of uh, of the map as we do see both teams now kind of corralling themselves here and this is the thing now as well omg find themselves in a very unique position they can let this one go they can just say look we're not really bothered by it we don't really care you're only about 200 or gold so or gold or so away from abel finishing off his infinity edge and it is a massive power spike but Looks like right now, OMG are saying, look, if NIP want to get this soul point, they're going to have to work for it. They're moving in aggressively, Cream on the flank. Cream is definitely crushing from the bottom side, but NIP moving as a five-man unit. You shouldn't get caught out here in this choke. Here we go. Chain of Corruption does go down. That's Shanghi soaking up with the initial brunt. And NIP, they're scared. They're so afraid of the team fighting prowess. And Dragon is going to be started here. And that's OMG finally having priority over this pit. NIP finally get themselves a little bit of gold to go back and get themselves back in this pit. But uh, Invincible is going to have to pop the dominance Invincible? because he's taking so low. The lightning crash goes in. The Cyclone oh, on the three. I think they'll be trying to put this fight back on top of NIP. Nobody is touching Abel. And NIP are retreating constantly. They lose Sanji, but they don't care because Abel is just too damn big. They get four kills and NIP, they just couldn't find the opportunity. And OMG wipes the table for a one for five full trade. My bad, but NIP just, they were struggling to find angles to engage in that team fight where Arthur is the nastiest cyclone I've ever seen in the truck. And OMG definitely looking to get an inhibitor at least here. I won't think it's going to be game because they don't have enough minions to get the Nexus Tower, but that does mean the second dragon is going to add an extra five minutes to the scaling composition where the trade-off was only Shanti in this team fight. I mean, I feel like right now you're looking at this and kind of thinking that it, it's all but done for NIP. You've lost an inhibitor, you lost the fight. Let's have a look at this one because like as you say, it all kind of starts with NIP backing up, but then great cyclone from Aki. The yeah, Invincible does get poked out very early on in the team fight on this Renekton where he already half health by just Shanji doing damage to Renekton. So that was pretty shocking, but Aki right here, he sees the angle to engage with that Cyclone onto the carries with NIP as well. I mean, just landing a beautiful Cyclone onto NIP and just Zeri doing Zeri things. We've already reached the stage in the game where no one can really DPS the Zeri in the team fight. While well, Fosu is so occupied with something like the Luke and Akali in these team fights, the ADC's not dying. It just feels like it's it's indecision, it's indecisiveness coming out from NIP that's really plaguing them this game now. They've got themselves in a 2,000 or nearly 3,000 gold hole uh, for the moment as they look to try and work them's way back out. But again, you're looking at, we talked about Fotic. 
he had the stopwatch. He no longer has the stopwatch. Now you're looking at Abel with an Infinity Edge. With an extra BF sword on top of that Infinity Edge. So he is huge coming into this potential Baron fight now. And this could be it. I think, like, NIP, you got to go for something. You're, you're engaged. It's got to be XLB. If he's getting engaged upon, you know the fight's already lost. Rudy emphasized on NIP's team composition really relying on getting that early lead. With this Renekton, I mean, you're never going to be able to match something like Asante in a straight-up 5v5. And Invincible, he just doesn't have enough CC in these team fights to really occupy the ADC and mid lane of OMG where they're trying to face... No! Not gonna survive! Cream just gets everything right there. The Wild Grove is gonna keep both ticket arms length and they're gonna be pop his Immortal Shield though. XLB is dead. Oh my god, that damage is insane. This is why you cannot let Cream have the Akali, even though he had a bit of a bad early stage. And on the backside, I don't even know how Pout died. Shanji 1v1'd him and got the kill. That's an ace out of nowhere for the side of OMG. A free Baron goes towards OMG and they're just in the driver's seat ever since that first dragon going to their hands as well. I mean, like you said, Pal should have died off screen. I don't know to what, but just face checking into something like this Baron is so dangerous for the side of NIP, especially with the amount of pure force that OMG has with this Wukong. I mean, we just see Drew getting straight up caught out here as he doesn't have anyone next to him and he gets straight up deleted by Cream as Botic. He does land the ultimate, but you're up against an Akali who does have her third item. I mean, even through the Immortal Shield, though, you can't really escape. Someone is dying in that top side, though. I believe that is Pal. He just yep. up gets soloed by Shanti on the Kassante. I think Kassante is very healthy for the game, guys. I mean, absolutely. Very, you know, this is nerfed Kassante as well. Don't forget that. Yep. This is 13.3. But now XLB having to use his Crescent Guard just to defend himself against the Akali. I like, I, I was going to say that, like, Cream doesn't even have his third item. He just finished up his yeah. death cap right there. So. I, I mean, this is all but done. It's ballooned to an 8,000 gold lead. Baron is there. Shanji could 1v2. I wouldn't have been doubted at this point in the game. And it really does feel like it was a slow burn for OMG, but they never felt out of control in this series, or in this game, excuse me. We set OMG up with this traditional team composition, and they reached the late game with Abel not dying a single time. I mean, do you think he's going to die? NIP just straight up don't have the damage. Your pal is level 17, but he is so short range compared to something like the Zeri, who is level 16 and looking of his top lane in here. Yeah. You're just, you don't really have it right there. You got the Cosmic Overdrive from Pout, so he does have a fair bit of damage in fairness to him alongside the Ser uh, Seraphs and, of course, the uh, Rod of Ages fully stacked, but it's just a, l a hiding to nothing, as we can see now. The third in in inhibitor turret's going to be focused. Shanji takes about half his HP. It's mainly due to the turret, if you've got to be honest. Invincible loses his as well. Here we go. Lightning Crash comes down. And Aki finds himself on the back side to get XLB down. Invincible next to follow. It's a double kill coming in for Cream. This Akali is too big. Oh, he wants it. And he ends up paying his life for it. They do get the GA there. As Shanji goes out onto the back side. They have to use the Realm Orb just to taxi the rise back onto the fountain. They will lose the two solo laners, but it does not matter. OMG in a comfortable game one victory over NIP. Cleaning the game very, very easy as we approach the end game. And even looking at the scoreboard, I mean, we need to mention how Cream on this Akali did start the game as one full, but he was able to redeem himself by ending seven and five. And even by that last team fight, he was just going in for a little bit of fun because the game was pretty much over ever yep. since that second dragon went into the hands of OMG. And they were just taking over the game with the Zeri and Lulu in the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, it, it just felt like the advantages you need to get with this composition for NIP just never, you know, they never formulated. They never came together at the such. They had one good kill in mid lane. I wanted to see more. I think if you're playing something like the Xin Zhao, you, and with the amount of heavy pressure you have, you have to fight at everything. You cannot just let this team scale up and get into things. And the big, the big moment was that third dragon. That third dragon that delayed the game, that pushed them to kind of say, okay, we're at minimum 10 minutes away from a soul, so we are already in a bad position at this particular point in time. We have to try and go for something. They just never pulled the trigger. Yeah, even someone got caught early on where it was a 4v5, but Xiaolongbao, just a bit of miscommunication from the NIP roster, and that dragon did go into the hands of OMG. But we need to mention how OMG's entire team identity, when it does come to the late game, they seem very composed as to what should be done, because we saw that Juo, he was trying to get at least some vision onto the Baron, which was getting threatened, but when you do have something like Kasante and Zeri, I mean, they just played into the hands of OMG. Yeah, it really, really did. And OMG looking very, very comfortable. And 
it, it, I really do think you're going to have to try and get something done now because OMG have proven time and time again that, like, look, we play through our solo lanes. Abel is just a very good ADC. We're going to be able to get him through on whatever the hell we kind of put him on. And we are just going to be able, out, able to out team fight you. I feel like Cream and specifically Shanji just had a, a very solid uh, kind of, you know, laning setup. I feel like after that first kill went over for the Akali, there wasn't really any threat. He was able to just farm, keep himself relevant, get himself up to relevant item spikes. And it never really was in doubt. Sure, there was a little bit of a gold lead, but it was never really out of reach for the side of uh, OMG. And this all goes back to draft, right? NIP banning out Kaisa and Samira over the Zeri Lulu, where they're able to pick it up on 4 5 blue side. And I think that is just straight up illegal activity when you do come into patch 13.3, where we already see in the damage charts that Abel was just able to do so much damage to the side of NIP, where pretty much no threat from this rise and Varus was existing. Yeah, Varus was doing okay, I guess, but it just really wasn't enough in terms of his team's damage. You can see just kind of little by little, bit by bit, it was just the Zeri taking over in fights. It was just the Akali being more threatening. I feel like the Rise and the Varus are all well and good in those long extended team fights, but Blink and the Akali's killed your, your AD carry or maybe even your support as well. So we'll have to see what the adaptations are going to be from NIP, but for OMG, great start to this series.